What's going on? Move the Mouse here, back in City Skylines. Let's play Season 10, Episode Number 1. This is when I have no problem keeping track of the episode numbers. We're starting a brand new city today. We're going to be using one of the Green Cities maps called Lavender Lake. And this is a fantastic map because it has a little bit of everything. There's ore and oil, forestry and farming. There's outside connections for highway, rail, shipping, and air. And we've got a decent amount of buildable space at 75%. So let's go ahead and get started. And like I've done in so many series before, we're playing without random disasters. We're not going to use the day-night cycle so that it's always day. It makes it a little bit easier to see. We'll take the occasional look at our city at night. But we're going to be playing with none of the cheats here. So let's go ahead and just start a legit city. Build it up from the ground up. Talk about the process as we go. This one is gonna be the greenest city that you've ever seen, on my channel at least. We're gonna try and minimize pollution. We will start with a little pocket of industry because it's kind of tough to grow your city without it, but we'll eventually phase that out and try and keep it really small. One of the other challenges that we're gonna have though this season is cash. Building a green city is really expensive. And we'll kind of talk about each of the individual elements as we go through, but you know, schools are more expensive. Cleaning the water is more expensive. All these things that will drop into our city ultimately cost a lot more. We'll start by pausing because anytime time is passing, we're spending money on anything that we build. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna come in here. We're gonna build uh, our little kind of highway uh, exit down this way. And this is gonna be the first area of our town. The map itself, uh, wrong button. The map itself has a pretty decent nine tile area if you want to go three by three squares for those of you that are playing on pc you obviously can expand beyond that and another interesting note i'm going to be throwing out a couple episodes here and there of a very similar city on the same map on pc but with mods and cheats enabled so for those of you that are playing on pc and want to follow along um, i'll have some tips and tricks and kind of a slightly different build for you but anybody can follow along with this um, if you have the Green Cities DLC, and if not, you can do a lot of the same things with just the base game. Uh, but what we're going to do, like we've done so many times before, is start with a tiny segment of road, and that will unlock our one-ways. And now I can come down here. Let's go to there. That should be good. And then I think this lines up. No, it doesn't. Okay. We'll reverse the direction on this. So we've got kind of this extension of the highway coming in to our city or going out on the other side to be correct. So let's start with that. Now money is going to be really tight. What I want to do over here, I'm going to do a little, uh, a little Imperial Jedi start to our industrial area. So let's come down. We'll come over 20 and down 20. Right, and that gives us a 45 degree angle that we can come off of, like that. And uh, before we delete these, if we delete this segment right here, this road, it's going to make snapping off of this road very tough. So here I'm going to do two more stretches of one-way roads. So that when we come into this zone, which will be our first industrial zone, we're really going to push the traffic away from this intersection. And we don't have to immediately zone on top of that. But that's a good way to get things funneled off here. We'll build a tiny little neighborhood for right now. Uh, I, sh I shouldn't say neighborhood. This is going to be for uh, industrial space. We'll come down know, two blocks or so. 20 units. That works. Uh, and we should probably extend these one ways. Now that I think about it, all the way down to the end of that block. Uh, upgrade. And change direction. So when you come in from the outside world, when you hit this intersection, you have to kind of go one way or the other. And, and that forces traffic into one of those two lanes. And it gets all the traffic flowing away from the highway so that hopefully this won't back up too, too fast. It's also going to give us this, you know, little pocket of pollution over here. 
but we'll try and keep it pretty minimal. Um, and then over this way, we could do this as a two lane road. Let's see here. We'll go straight. And we'll come just over like that. Twelve units out does a, a relatively smooth slope. Snap up there. Come on. There we go. And then we'll do this to direct the traffic back up to the highway. So we can kind of do the same thing over here. Let's let's do a little a little symmetry. So we'll come up 20 before we go over. Is that a little funky? Let's see. Let's go 20 this way also. That looks like it's lined up. Let's see if it will. Uh... I don't know why it wants to curve that just ever so slightly. All right, well, whatever, it works. It's our first fix it later project, but we're gonna upgrade all this to, to highway at some point anyways. So you can come into the city and I should say you can come into the industrial zone, head off this way. And then to leave, you have to come over this bridge and head out that way. And we'll round this out some more as we need uh, more industry space. But what I wanna do down here is, let's do this. Let's come down 20 more units. We'll go over 10, we'll do the same thing over here, we'll go over 10 to kind of space out this road a bit. Now I'm going to delete all this. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to delete this. So what I'm thinking here is let's break out the, let's break out this tool. Let's upgrade this to a four lane. We'll reconnect that after um, and jump back into our two lane highway. And, and what I want to do here is, you know, this is kind of a highway that's continuing on into our residential and commercial area. We're keeping all the industrial traffic separate up here. I mentioned, I think I mentioned a kind of an Imperial start. This is actually kind of an Imperial Jedi layout. So if you're a fan of his channel, he does some awesome content, some awesome let's plays. I actually learned a lot from him when I was starting out on console a few years ago. So. If, uh, if you enjoy my content, definitely check out his. Uh, what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna curve these out just a little bit. So let's see what we get kind of a, a decent curve. It doesn't have to be anything too abrupt, but what we're doing here is we're spacing out the, the place between these so we don't have two intersections right on top of one another. Probably didn't have to upgrade that so soon. I could have upgraded it after connecting these, it would have been cheaper. We're definitely working into our money quite a bit, but now we've got, well, once I change the direction here, at least, uh, we've got a way in and out of the industrial zone and in and out of what will be kind of our, our main street for this area. Now, I wanna be careful here because money's gonna be tight in this build. Going green is expensive. So let's come out Let's come up two on either side. And when I say two, I mean 20 units, two big lines. Come on. And we'll make our first uh, kind of intersections down into our suburban neighborhood down here. And I'm leaving space for uh, footpaths. So that was 12 units off from the four lane road. Since the two lane roads are smaller, we can come 11 units out on that and achieve the exact same thing. Now these are really long blocks, so let's get connected right there in the middle so that people can kind of drive through uh, the middle of the zone. And that's good enough to start. We're, we're already a lot lower on money than I like to be, but like I said, going green is not gonna be cheap. We've got some roads. Let's think power and water. Now for electricity, I would normally drop in a coal power plant. Those are incredibly polluting though. What's nice is the wind turbines don't pollute at all. They do noise pollution, but they also don't produce as much power. So we're gonna be dropping in a lot of these. So let's start as close as we can to the shoreline. Where's it gonna let me kind of draw the line here? Just so that we have enough space. So we'll power that and I'm thinking rather than run power lines everywhere, there's a decent pocket of wind up this way. 
So we can run power there for our industrial zone and we'll eventually get it connected together. Uh, if I was thinking, if, because I wasn't, I would have started down here, would have been smarter because then you have to run less electrical line over there. It's going to be a little bit cheaper in the long run. What can you do though? Now, water wise, this is an interesting challenge because if you look here, we've got a lake that is our water source. So we do one of two things. We could pollute this lake with our sewage and use water towers to supply water. Or in this case, I think what we'll do is do water pumps right there. And we're going to use one of the uh, newer assets, the inland water treatment plant. So inland water treatment plant extends the water services to include cities built far away from open water sources. The building processes and drains wastewater back into the ground and the plant's surroundings will be affected by ground pollution. So rather than polluting the water, we're just kind of draining it off uh, down here. Uh, now, I do want to kind of have like a little city service area that maybe comes comes off of here. Maybe runs up towards the highway or as close as we can get to the highway for now. We'll go back into water. We'll do the inland water treatment plant on this block right here. And that'll get us started. Now, power wise, if we zone carefully, this should help spread power throughout the entire uh, industrial zone. And again, if we zone smart over here, let's get this as close to the corner of this intersection for now as we can. That should give us a pretty good head start there. We've got 19,000 left in the bank. We're going to need it sooner than you think to put in more uh, power plants. I take it back. We don't have 19,000 in the bank. We haven't done any water pipes yet. <laughs> Man, we're going to cut this. This one's going to get cut kind of close. So let's go here and we'll kind of try and run parallel to the street. There's one little click in there. There we go. You can do 460 or 440. I'm going to do 440 because it makes me feel a little bit better and have a tiny little bit of overlap. We'll even do that for some redundancy. And then let's run this so that it at least covers the interior zone there. And then we'll figure out where we need to go from there. Okay, so now we have $13,000. A little bit less than we had before, but that's okay, it should be plenty. Now on our kind of Main Street area, think of this as our, our you know, little downtown Main Street. Um, that I want to be commercial and then I'm going to have a little bit of a buffer space and then this is going to be residential. So let's start over here and specifically, let's start on the side that, uh, oh, come on. Let's start on the side where the, uh, the power is actually running. And since residential demand is the only thing we have right now, let's go ahead and hit play. Let's throw it on three times speed. And let me tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking for this season. So if you take a look around the map, it's relatively flat, but then there's some mountains that kind of come up out of nowhere. We've got a little bit of water to work with, but not a lot. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a very small town feel um, or, or big little town. So what I was thinking, at least aesthetically, is something like Boulder, Colorado. So I'll, I'll bring that up. I'll show you a little bit of a Google Earth image of Boulder and Boulder's a really beautiful little city. I say little because, um, uh, and while I'm talking about this, let me, let me, let me keep putting down some residential zoning. Um, it's relatively, you know, spread out. And if you look at it from overhead, it, it looks pretty big. Um, but from uh, ground level, you'll notice that the biggest building is 12 stories. There's no skyscrapers. There's no giant towers. It's a small town that's spread out and to one side, you see, you see the Midwest, you see the very flat middle section of America. It just goes flat forever. And then if you turn around and look at the other side of the town, the Rocky Mountains are right there. It's, it's right on the edge of the Rockies. It's one of the weirdest juxtapositions that you will ever see in a city. Um, and I absolutely love it. And I kind of, kind of thought that would be kind of a cool, uh, feeling or aesthetic to kind of try and replicate here a little bit. So we're going to stay all low density zoning. We're going to switch over to uh, a couple green cities, neighborhoods, uh, self-sufficient buildings at some point. Uh, but for right now, we'll start with all the, the regular 
which is the only thing we have unlocked anyways, so kind of have to. Along our main street, we'll do commercial, and I'll even do commercial pockets here. And here, for now. And we also have a uh, real decent demand for industrial. So where, where do we want this industry? I'm gonna pause it for one second. We don't want it on the one ways. So we're trying to funnel all this traffic off of the highway that way or that way. And if you put businesses right up against this road or against this road, then trucks are gonna be stopping and turning in and out of there and it, it can kind of make traffic a mess. So, so we wanna keep that flowing as, as freely as possible. We're fine with people zoning on the two-way roads and how we can basically achieve that is, is like that. Now over here, this should be fine. So we'll fill all that in. Let's go ahead and throw it on three times speed again and let some people move in. We're losing money, but that's okay because we forgot to mess around with our budgets, but things like electric budget already isn't that expensive. And if we knock that down, we're producing almost no electricity. So if we go into info views, um, okay, well, we could knock it down a little bit right now, but you know, we're, we're not producing a lot. And also keep in mind that although it says we're producing uh, 15 megawatts of power, uh, actually what's happening here is this is producing about seven and this is producing about eight and they're totally independent and not connected right now. So we'll have to drop in uh, more wind turbines really, really soon. First couple cars pulling into our city. Uh, we do have traffic lights at these intersections, but I think it's spaced out enough that it will work in the build that I'm, that I'm thinking here. Hopefully it will. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of fill up to the trees and let the trees kind of decide where this part of our city ends. Um, so we'll, we'll run some neighborhoods down here until we get into the trees and it'll kind of angle off that way. We've got some cool uh, farming area we'll be able to use up here. We've got a uh, more farming and there's a train network up there. And do we have... I'm trying to remember if we have shipping on this build. I don't I don't think that we'll have shipping on this build, but this map is possible depending on what tiles you go out to. Sorry, I'll stop whipping the camera around like a madman. Happens at some point. We're already in the positive numbers wise, which is fantastic. Because again, we're going to need the money. Wait, wait till you see how tight this, this budget's going to be. I did a little bit of a test build, kind of go went through like the first two or three milestones. And, and man, there's not a lot of money to spare. So... We'll try and really keep an eye on our budget, only expand what we need when we need. It's one of the, the best things I can recommend for new players is uh, expand slowly but surely. Speaking of, let's get ready for our next neighborhood where we got a little bit of money in the bank. Let's see how much money this is gonna cost us. Ooh, okay. I broke my power line doing that, so. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's move our next residence in on that street. And I'm leaving a little bit of a dead zone there in case we want to continue uh, the roads through here. That way we don't have to move anybody out. We've got residential demand. Let's see if they move in here and if that spreads power. I hope. I hope that it does. Although there's still a couple spots over there, which is unfortunate. So let's just do this. Can we get... Oh, never mind. So, so close. So now that has power again. Let's take a look at our milestones on the Lavender Lake map 420 for uh, Little Hamlet. And then where is our top range? 90,000. Not planning on hitting this one. Not planning on hitting this one. I always do that. I always like, you know, cram a bunch of stuff in just to get to the monuments to maybe use a monument to intend to back it down. I never back it down right. I'm going to really build with aesthetics in mind in this one and uh, and try and keep things going that way. Okay, we'll do the same thing here where we're not zoning in the middle where our footpaths are going to be. And we're going to have to break a couple houses here and there eventually to do some cross paths and things like that. But we'll we'll figure out which houses we like and which ones we don't and build a footpath through the ones we don't like. You know, if we're not crazy about these Art Deco style uh, builds, you know, you could demolish that. If you really like 
the look of a particular building. Uh, you can go in and make it historical, and that way as it levels up, it doesn't change appearance. Uh, the buildings will level up as they go, as they grow, and, and they'll actually become different buildings. So if you really like the look of something and want to keep it where it is, uh, make sure and consider uh, the historical building marker is a, a really nice thing for that. Got a decent amount of commercial demand. We've got more industrial demand already. So let's extend, I was gonna say, let's extend this block, but let's talk about these things since, you know, they're important. Uh, we'll pause real quick. We'll go into economy and we'll take out that loan. We'll go into taxes and make it 12% across the board. And then let's take a look at what we unlocked. So taxes and loans already taken care of. Garbage, healthcare, education. And at least for garbage and education, we've got uh, green options there. So if we go into the right tab, you have your standard dump. And your standard dump does 100 pollution, but zero noise pollution. The recycling plant does a little bit of noise pollution, but only 25 pollution. So you can put this much closer to residents if you need to. Thing is, it's more expensive to drop in and it's more expensive to upkeep but it also never fills. So we don't have to empty it to move it or bulldoze or do any tricks. We can just drop it in and worry a little bit less. Now, uh, one thing I realized is in setting up this loop, I don't have a way for people to come back into the city. So we'll do a real slop road right here for now. Just a straight one way shot that lets people loop back in if they need to. We'll eventually up upgrade this to highway and we'll do a, uh, a one lane uh, exit turnaround there, um, or maybe come up with something a little bit more efficient, but that that does what it needs. You know, if somebody comes to one of these businesses and needs to get back out and around, they can do that because those one ways might prevent that. Uh, but also if they need to get into the city, they could come out here and then use that little turnaround like that truck's doing right now. Perfect. Uh, so we're already, we're already out of power over there. Yeah, we are. So, uh, <laughs> wind turbine number one down. <laughs> Let's get this uh, we're as close as we can to the other one. But also where it is producing uh, maximum uh, power. So, uh, 8 megawatts is the max for these. The closer they are to um, water in a lot of cases. But it's more about the, the land that they're sitting on and if it has good access to crosswind. So if you put it in like a little valley where the wind can't hit it, it'll definitely affect it negatively. Uh, if you see kind of fog building up on your map, then you're usually producing less power because the, the wind's not pushing that moisture out of the air. Uh, let's see. We did garbage. We added a little extra power. Healthcare and education. So let's get healthcare out of the way and we can start to use this little this little block up here for some of our city services. They don't mind being crammed up next to the highway. Education wise, this is sort of similar to what we talked about just a moment ago in the dump. If we want to go with the standard school, it costs less. It costs less to upkeep. It uses a little more electricity and water though. Um, and it holds more students. So the downside to the community school, more expensive, more expensive to upkeep per week, but it uses less water and electricity hopefully giving us a return on investment in the long run, but it also supports less students. So uh, this is kind of perfect right in here. Let's drop this sort of smack in the middle of that block, right? I think that's a pretty good spot. It leaves us room for footpaths and it should make everybody happy in there. But that's a, a pretty good and simple start to our build. I like, I like this map. I like the promise of it in kind of messing around in a test build um, i really did enjoy uh, the challenge i think that again the budget's going to be so tight as we start to drop things in we're gonna have to drop in so many of these wind turbines and soon enough the advanced wind turbines we can drop in the water here um, but we don't unlock those until 2400 population so who knows maybe next episode we'll see what we have time to talk about we're going to expand industry just a little bit maybe at 850, we do unlock forestry and agriculture. So let me see if we can get there without, without any industry. 
or at least any expansion to the industry that we already have because then we can at least do some forestry and farming and start to branch out a little bit and and continue on down that uh, that green path but this is the city of rosewood thank you so much everybody for tuning in to the first episode season 10 off to a pretty good start, I think. I'm I'm enjoying this one, and we haven't had any fires yet, but that's because we haven't unlocked the fire departments. Stay tuned for that. I'm sure there will be plenty. We'll put lots of trees down, so there's plenty of material to burn. So fear not. If you're here for the fires, you will not be disappointed, I'm sure. They just don't happen until we actually unlock the, uh, the fire department. We're going to try and keep things small this season, all low density. We're going to focus on a lot of the uh, specialized zoning, specifically the... Uh, self-sufficient buildings and local and organic produce we're gonna do farming and forestry both traditional and industries dlc based and we're gonna build out i think a, a pretty fun small town a, a big small town whatever you want to take away from that uh hopefully you enjoyed today's episode can't thank you enough for the support this channel has grown so much over the last couple of years and it's all thanks to city skylines and to people like you so thank you thank you thank you every like comment and share helps so much more than you know it's greatly appreciated i say it all the time but really like comment and share interact with content that you enjoy youtube will show you and others more of it if you're new here subscribe for more i do lots of city skylines content mostly on console but we're also going to be doing some pc building of this same city uh oh side by side this uh, season uh, so I'm going to be loading it up with mods and cheats so that I don't have to worry about the money and we're just going to do some building, but I'll be building a very similar city, but uh, going through some different mods and techniques that I enjoy uh, on the PC side of things. So keep an eye out for those. I'm going to try and get back into the regular content Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. This premiere counts as Monday's episode, so don't check back tomorrow. Check back Wednesday for another uh, look at Rosewood most likely. But there's lots of other stuff that I've been meaning to get to. Life is just so busy right now. So hopefully you bear with me. Hopefully you enjoy the content. I aim to educate, entertain, and inform. And if I did any of those, leave a like on the video. Check back for more. Join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. There's a terrific group of people over there. Fans of the channel, fans of the game. And whether you are playing on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, whether you're a veteran or have a beginner question, fantastic group of people over there. Come join us, get involved in the discussion. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and all those other things in the description down below. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in for the start of season 10. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. We've laid the foundation for Rosewood from here to there and everywhere in between. It's the greenest city that you've ever seen, on my channel at least. Until the next one, though, this is Move the Mouse. Signing off.